Now, a story you'll see only on Eyewitness News, sex trafficking survival. It's a frightening reality, and if you think it's not happening in our backyard, think again. They end up here in Providence, Rhode Island, being sold out of hotels, being put in the strip clubs here in Rhode Island. Um, but, but it's funny, at the same time, you'll hear people say, not in my neighborhood. Tonight, a side of the sex trade we rarely see a victim. A woman lured into that world as a teenager, now sharing her story with me, hoping to help others. And she tells us the girls being sold for sex in Rhode Island are many of the same girls you see in your neighborhoods. And the men are from suburbs throughout the state. She's dedicated her life to building a brighter future for sex trafficking victims, but it was Audrey Morrissey's dark past that led her here. I was brought into the commercial sex industry as a minor. I remember the first time um, that I was coerced into going uh, on a street corner. 15 years old and pregnant, Audrey says it was the baby's father who used seduction to pull her in. And I was told, if you love me, you would do this. Audrey now works for the Boston organization My Life, My Choice. It reaches more than 200 girls every year, victims of the vicious and violent child sex trafficking industry, most of them between 12 and 15 years old. She says too many people think of sex trafficking victims as those brought into the U.S. from other countries, when in reality... This is happening in our own backyards, in our own communities. Victims advocates tell me there's a very organized network of girls being moved back and forth throughout the Northeast, up and down the 95 corridor. They say these pimps mostly prey on girls who've been abused, neglected, or exposed to family violence and addiction. They're targeted in their neighborhoods, at the mall, the bus station, and on the Internet. That suburban mom, too, that thinks her daughter's safe, right? Their daughter's online. I know quite a few suburban girls. Think they're talking to a 16-year-old guy. They set up the meeting. Just last year, 30-year-old Stephen Ardry took a 17-year-old girl from Medfield, Massachusetts, across state lines here to Rhode Island after months of communicating in an online chat room. He brought her to a hotel in West Greenwich, posting her picture online and advertising her for sex. He was arrested, charged, and sentenced to 14 years in prison after someone recognized the pair from a missing persons report walking along the highway. It's very sad that as a community, we've been blind to what really is right there, you know, in front of us. Day one in Providence has developed a sex trafficking task force to help Rhode Island victims. Executive Director Peg Langhammer tells me it's made up of representatives from federal, state, and local law enforcement, the Department of Children, Youth, and Families, health care providers, and more. Still, she says sex trafficking cases are tough to track. It's very pervasive. We don't have hard numbers on this. We don't have good statistics. Um, for a while, it seemed like we were getting a case every week here at day one. The group is also training members of the community to recognize signs of exploitation. What we've heard from kids again and again is that no one ever asked me about this. If someone had asked me if something was happening, I might have talked about it. Advocates tell me there are red flags to look for. A girl in your neighborhood is wearing jewelry you know her family can't afford, or she's all of a sudden wearing nicer clothes or dressing more provocatively. The fear. It wasn't until she was in her 30s that Audrey was able to pull herself out of that violent world. By spreading awareness and continuing to mentor these victims, she says she's using the bad that happened to her for good. I really understand um, my purpose and that I didn't go through all of that for nothing. Audrey is not only training survivors to be mentors here in New England, but up and down the East Coast, spreading what she calls the survivor model to as many organizations as possible. This story continues tomorrow morning. Find out how a statewide task force of advocates and survivors is pushing to change the approach to sex trafficking here in Rhode Island. That's tomorrow on Eyewitness News This Morning.